<laughs> they call me crazy, but they were wrong. For I've finally done it. I've crafted a potion that is going to help me forget amiibo forever. I would never need to collect another one. <sighs> Bottoms up, everyone. <sighs> no. No, something's wrong. What went wrong? What went wrong? Oh no. Oh no. I've created the truth serum. This was a terrible idea for an opener. Well, at least it's working. Crafting a video opener may be really hard, but crafting in video games has just become easier than ever, thanks to tools that have been given to us, the players, from the developers, as well as just interfaces that have just become easy and intuitive to use. One such example is I've been playing a lot of uh, the Wargroove editor lately, and I've been having a ball with it, and it's just been really easy for me to get into. And that gave me the inspiration for the video today to think, you know what, there may be other people who just want a list of some great crafting games to get into, because there's a lot of different genres and games that you can play in here that I think are worth diving through, as well as some upcoming ones that we're gonna get to at the end. Now, I do want to make one thing clear here as we're going to go through this list. I'm not just talking about any old crafting game like Breath of the Wild as much as I adore that game. The crafting in that game is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about things that actually let you make, let you build and let you craft a lot of stuff. The game is built around the crafting aspect, not just has it entwined into the game a little bit. And there is like a grey line here that's hard to tell the difference. So like, I encourage you to let me know any that you know down below and enjoy. And I'm not going to judge you if, if it doesn't make my list because um, it's hard to tell. In fact, you're going to find out there's some of my list that I'm kind of like, eh, did that really make the list? Like, is that really 100% about crafting? But I did the best I could. <laughs> the too long didn't watch version of that is Breath of the Wild and Stardew Valley didn't make my list because of reasons. <laughs> Let's get into the video. Now the first game that I want to start with here is Minecraft. And you're probably thinking, hey, I've heard of that game. <laughs> you totally have. And that's why we're going to be brief with Minecraft because I feel like everybody knows about Minecraft is either knows about it, plays it, watches it, seen it, heard it, touched it. They've done something with Minecraft already. I do not need to spend long on this game. In fact, I've already spent too long. As this list is about the best crafting games on Switch, I would be very, very upset at myself if I didn't mention Minecraft, as well as the fact that it does have some updates now. I don't know like when the last time you played Minecraft was, but if it was a while ago, they're now up to the Bedrock Edition in, in um, the Switch, the thing we're actually talking about. <laughs> and uh, it's super impressive. Like I tried the console versions on the PS4 a while ago and didn't enjoy it overly that much. But now that it's on the Switch and it's this newest edition, it's really intuitive and easy to get into. And just has a whole bunch of extra content there that I did not know was actually in the game. Like, obviously they keep updating this and updating this and updating this and it just keeps getting bigger. And now there's all these new things that I didn't even know are in the game. One thing you might not know was in this version is the Mario mashup pack. You know, that's unfair. You probably didn't know that. But the Mario mashup pack is really cool. I'm not going to go into depth in this, but like if you like Mario and like Mar and Minecraft, get into this. Dragon Quest Builders. Now this was a game that when it came out got a lot of slack and there's a good reason for that because it came out at a time we just had like Minecraft and then we had a slew of other Minecraft clones and this was thrown into the Minecraft clone pile. There you go, jump in. Um, and it was unfairly put in there. Like we had to go take it back out of there because it turns out this game stands on its own. It has like a really decent kind of story mode to it and it's and the actual core gameplay I don't describe as Minecraft gameplay. Yeah, sure, like if you looked at it at your first glance, you'd be like, that looks like Minecraft. But like, when the further you get into this, the more you start to pull this away from Minecraft. <laughs> We've finally got past the Minecraft section, and I'm pretty sure I've said the word Minecraft about six times now. So um, that's it for now on. Zip. It's not it. What makes this different from other games where you have to make a dirt hut is that it's all focused in that one town. You have to build walls around your town. You have to defend that town. You're gonna go out and around the map but only so you can recruit people and do other stuff to bring back to that town. It's all kind of focused around that area. It's not like in other and other announced games where you can go and make a dirt hut in any hill. You, you, there's one spot where you have to work in this and you work with that spot. And then the biggest difference here, it's as I was going on about before, the story. So you're actually following a, a, a path with a story. You're going and recruiting characters. You're talking to people. It's all based around stuff like that happening. It's not just based around internal, eternal freedom where you can just go wherever you want and do whatever you want and be free. 
No, they really get the chains down in here and lock in and say, no, you're bound to this town, get in it. At the end of the day, I had so much fun with this game and there was a demo in the store. So if you want to try it and you want to know if it's up your alley as well, then just go jump into that. It's a very good explanation, like the demo itself, of what the gameplay is going to be like because it'll give you the feeling of jumping into that town um, and what you're going to be doing. Now, the next one on my list is Portal Knights. This kind of dances over the line a little bit further away from the crafting aspect, which is why I was hesitant to put it on this list, but it still very much feels like a, a Minecraft esque or Dragon Quest Builders S type game. From the 10 to 15 hours that I actually played this game, I, I didn't complete it, me and Nat actually got a copy of the game each and played it together, but from the time that we played with it, we never got to a point where we were building a town. We, we built like small, I guess you'd call them like dirt huts if we're back to Minecraft again, uh, where we'd just kind of protect our stuff, and maybe throw some chests down and other stuff, but it was never about building a town and, and stuff like that. But this, the stuff in that game was still there that you could do that, which is why it is still in this list. Now the game itself is actually really surprisingly pretty. Like everything is kind of rounded and colorful and bouncy and fun. Um, and so like, it's a pleasure just to run through these worlds. And that's the other point of this game is that it's smaller worlds. So where like you're used to running across a big biome maybe in Minecraft, how many times is that word gonna come up in this? In this one, there's just a lot of worlds that each one leads to another one that leads to another one, and they're just a little bit smaller in comparison, but it helps kind of bring in that diversity and that flavor of just, you're always seeing something different, something different and pleasing to your eyes. The load times can be a little bit, I don't know, like, you know, because you're traveling between these worlds so often, that can get a little bit annoying, but as far as the game itself, it's actually quite top-notch. Like, it's, it's not deep, deep combat, but like when you compare it to other games in this genre that we've mentioned enough times, I don't need to say their names again, uh, the combat is really good. You can like choose between three different classes at the start. There's a bunch of skills, there's magic. You're gonna be crafting a lot of different type of gear for your characters and stuff like that in general. So like, the focus on the RPG side of this, they really just kind of looked at the others and just pushed down the walls and said, nope, nope, we're not kind of gonna seal ourselves in by saying we have to be basic. We're really gonna like, like build up our own wall here. So yeah, at the end of the day, you're gonna be leveling up, there's NPCs all around the place, quests to run, and if you're just after one of these type of games that like maybe you want to get a little bit away from that crafting aspect and move a bit closer to the actual combat, then this is for you. So next up, I have a few games on my list that I do wanna go into, but I wanna give a little bit of a caveat here and say, uh, I probably won't be going as in depth with these for various reasons which I will be getting into as I go through them starting with City Skylines. Now the reason that I'm not going to be going in depth with this one is because I don't own it on the Switch. I own it on the PC and I played it a long time ago. I don't know how long ago, a little while ago now. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun with it. It is just a, a really decent city builder. So if you're looking for a, a city builder that feels like SimCity uh, done by in modern day and, and really fun still and, and really good mechanics. This is one of them I did manage to dive into a couple of reviews for the switch version just to give you a little bit of a general consensus here of what it exactly is it like um, And the consensus seems to be that if you zoom right in with the map It can chug a little bit but from your natural playing play angle So like where you normally be zoomed out. It seems to play really well It is a slight downgrade from the, the PC version but you're getting a portable version of this game. Speaking of that, actually, you know, it's been a long time since I've played a, a city builder on anything. So I, I should probably go pick this game up again. Moving back out of city builders and into world builders again, which you know what, a lot of these crafting type of games are, um, it's Lego World. And this is kind of, should be a completely natural fit. You think about Lego and crafting, they go one and one. If you're not stepping on Lego and hurting your feet, you're crafting with them. Now this is another one that I can't just go and give a recommendation myself because I haven't played it. I saw Nat play a bunch of this um, and she seemed to rather like it, although she did have a few hang-ups with it. As far as what the actual gameplay is, because that's probably what you're here for to even know if you're interested in the first place, uh, the gameplay is you're going to be jumping from Lego worlds to Lego worlds, I guess that makes sense. And these different worlds you're going to be going to, you're going to be just completing quite easy objectives for NPCs laying around the place, collecting gold bricks, you know the usual stuff that you kind of expect from a LEGO game. It seems to have a lot of costumes and a lot of different build options there, but it doesn't quite feel as deep from what I've been seeing of it. Again, this is a third hand preview, so like, I take my whatever I'm saying here with a grain of salt. So let's get out of the worlds and into another new crafting genre here, which is the tycoon genre, or roller coaster tycoon to be exact. 
Now this game, I don't know, I haven't played a roller coaster tycoon game in a long time. So like, I don't even remember how far, I don't know how far they came from back when they started. If you know what roller coaster tycoon gameplay is, this has that in there. Apparently it's missing a couple of the bells of whistles and that like some of the later versions have had, but it still seems like a really decent game. The only thing that, the only problem that I've found with this is that when you get a full park, when it's all decked out, things really do start to chug along. If you have like, because you can unlock bigger maps and they can get bigger and bigger as you kind of pay for money to get the, the extra areas around your, your park. As you get those extra areas and start to branch out, it just really starts to chug when you get a few roller coaster going, a few rides going, and everything is just going to slow right down. The frame rate really does dip. I guess if you don't know what a roller coaster tycoon game is, you're going to be making your own theme park, trying to make it successful while keeping everyone happy. Then of course, as you would expect, you can make your own roller coasters. It does go quite deep, but I won't get into the complexities. But if you can look past a couple of frame rate issues and, and just really want to get back into the, the tycoon roller coasting genre, um, get into this. <laughs> The last one here on my list of no particular order, I probably should have mentioned that from the start, there is, there's definitely not a top and bottom of this list, this is just kind of wherever they landed, they landed and, um, and Wargroove would have been somewhere higher if it was the case. Uh, Wargroove is my last one. So Wargroove it, by itself isn't just a, a crafting game or edit, uh, like an editing game, but when you get into the editor mode, it, is, it does become a crafting game. It allows you to create your own world or your own game inside that. And the tools for Wargroove, the tools, my god. They are so intuitive, like I've already done a whole video on this, so I'm not going to dive really deep on this, but for someone who wants to get in at the ground level, Wargroove's tools are just there and easy to learn. Creating your own campaigns in Wargroove is 100% why I'm there, whether it be because I love creating the cutscenes, or, or whether it just be that I love making maps and, and, and all the full campaigns as a whole. Everything kind of just works together with each other, and it's light on the surface and can get deep, and that's my favourite thing about it. Anyway. I'm not going to go blab on about Wargroove because I'll, I'll probably even be talking about this more in the future, but Wargroove is great, definitely play the editor. Personally, I think it's about time that we wrap this list up in a nice little bow, but what? It's a nice little bow without a present, and I have a present for you to finish on here. We have some upcoming Nintendo Switch games that might scratch that creative itch that you've got going at the moment, or whatever else that is. I'm going to start with the most obvious one here, and that is Dragon Quest Builders 2, because I have done so much coverage on this already that I do not want to talk about this much more. I just want to say that it is coming sometime in 2019 by the looks of it, and um, look forward to that one because that is going to be fantastic and definitely going to be a great follow-up to the first Dragon Quest Builders game. Now, the second game that I want to talk about here is RBG Maker. There's a good reason I want to talk about this, and that is because I actually put a lot of time into RBG Maker back in the day, uh, and this, it's basically what it sounds like, RPG Maker. Um, the MV version is one of the latest versions, I believe it is the latest version. And RPG Maker is just a lot like Wargroove in the way that its editor is simple to get into, but complex enough that if you want to go to those layers and layers, it gets deep. However, this is another one of those things that's like, again, the PC version is probably always going to be the superior way to play this. But if you just like me and just want to be able to sit back on your couch, relax and, and get into one of these without being like overwhelmed with having to sit at the Overwhelmed by sitting at a computer? Wow, like what's wrong with me? <laughs> okay, if you, don't, if you just want to be able to sit back on your couch and relax and play one of these, then um, this is for you on the Switch when it comes out sometime in 2019 because it got delayed from February to sometime in 2019. Then we also have Terraria, which is coming out. I think it's Terraria or the Terraria. Um, which is coming out sometime in 2019 as well. Now, Terraria is basically 2D Minecraft from what I've heard. Honestly, I haven't played this one, so I can't give much more of an impression, but apparently there is a lot of kind of items and stuff that you can get into this, and it's, it's quite deep. So definitely one to keep an eye on if you like 2D creative games and, and, and games with creativity that are 2D. And the last one on my list to look forward to is Mario Maker, because that is coming, don't you tell me that it's not, sir, or madam. It's gonna be here. It has to. I'm upset about it. That's gonna do it for today, but before we go, I want you to let me know what creative games that you'd like, maybe you're looking forward to, maybe you enjoyed it in the past. Let's not even leave it at Switch, let's say whatever system you like, because I am that type of guy. I guess last of all, I just want you to remember that for great Nintendo entertainment, you can count on me. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. <laughs> what? <laughs>
I finally created a true serum. A true serum. No, that's a that's a what? <laughs> I've created a true serum. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the OJ's gone warm.